Edilu software also includes the Steel module. By opening a new document you can set up a Steel construction environment. In general, it is also possible to build mixed buildings, therefore even by starting a Steel environment, within this file we can safely insert reinforced concrete structures, such as the foundations. And the opposite is also true, by opening reinforced concrete rows it is always possible to insert steel elements. Typically, when we work with steel structures, we prefer modeling directly from the three-dimensional environment through the use of these objects called magnetic grid. Let's say that these objects define in space a configuration of nodes, to which we are going to hook our profiles. Keep in mind that these nodes have nothing to do with the concept of structural node, they are simply snap nodes to which we then go to hook the steel profiles. The magnetic grid by default is proposed when opening a new document. In the objects menu, we can take for example the object steel column clicking from node to node of the grid we can easily insert the columns. The same goes for the beams, if we select the object steel beam. From a snap node to another we easily insert the object directly from the three-dimensional view. If we select the column object, in the properties panel we need to specify the profile, the material, and so on. Clearly, the sections that we find here are always the sections present in the program archive. Therefore, in the navigator, in the node elements and still sections we can consult the sections available for the different profiles. In addition, there is always the possibility to interact with this archive by modifying or adding any sections not present in the basic archive of the software. Well, let's see now how you can assemble structures with an increasing level of complexity by taking advantage of the magnetic grid. From the 3D view, we take ourselves into the magnetic grid view. Here you can add new grids or you can modify those that you have already entered. In this case, we start to modify the standard grid proposed by default. By selecting this yellow arrow you can change the length of the side in the X direction. By selecting the line, instead, we change the length of the edge in the Y direction by fixing for example 5M. But by selecting the arrow it is possible to add new grids, we add one in the Y direction and one in the X direction. Returning to the 3D editor environment, we select the column object in reinforced concrete and then we begin to insert, not only steel structures, but also reinforced concrete structures within the 3D grid. In the selected object properties, it is possible to select the automatic recognition from the magnetic grid, just activate this flag. At this point, by defining a simple selection window we have inserted all the reinforced concrete column. We select this central row and change the height. Instead of 3 meters we bring it to 4 meters. So let's go back to the magnetic grid view. Take a standard grid and place it over this node. We select this side and change its length but without giving any measure from the keyboard, simply making it read from the drawing. We also add a grid in the X direction and change the length in the Y direction once again by reading the dimension directly from the drawing. As soon as we approach the column the snaps are activated and then the measurement is automatically read. Let's change the height of this newly inserted grid. At this point, if we select this grid node, these axes appear allowing you to rotate the grid. For example, we select the green axis and through the handle we define a certain rotation. Once again we do not need to insert a precise angle value, as we read everything directly from the drawing. We can also think of taking this side and eliminate it. Take this other edge, select the central dot, and divide it into four parts. So, starting from the elementary cell and making the necessary changes such as add, rotate, divide, we are trying to identify in space a configuration of particular nodes in order to being able to insert our steel profiles. When you insert this slant grid, you can copy it, for example, by using the Ctrl plus C key combination on your keyboard, and then paste it using the Ctrl plus V key combination. Let's then place the new grid on this node, then we select the grid just pasted, choose the axis of rotation and let's rotate it to the desired position. Having defined this node configuration in space, it will now be particularly easy to shape our steel axes to define a roof.
From the objects menu we then take the object steel beam and proceeding easily from node to node we model the load bearing beams of the roof. Changing the section, for example, choosing this IPE profile and always proceeding from node to node we can also insert what is the secondary spanning of these beams, placing them above the load bearing beams. But even more quickly, selected the steel beam object, in the properties you can enable the automatic recognition from magnetic grid. From this point of view, with a simple window we insert all the beams both on one side and on the other. So, quickly, we have inserted all the beams and shaped the roof. So here is the advantage in working with the magnetic grids. If this type of structure had to be made starting from the 2D level view, certainly to insert and modify all the beams we would surely have spent much more time. From these simple examples, it is clear that through the use of magnetic grid the modeling of framed structures is immediate. Let's see how to define a steel frame. In the magnetic grid view by opening a new document, let's immediately define our elementary cell, therefore, of 4x4 four four dimensions. Let's add grids in the y direction, but also in the x direction, we do the same thing also vertically. So, it could also, for example, happen that a part of these grids is not necessary. Here we have the visibility buttons and so, for example, we can decide to make this part invisible. It is clear that when we work directly in the 3D environment, we can create a building or a structure without putting any limits on the floors, but we must be careful that even when we work in the 3D environment we must never lose sight of the concept of level management. This is because, after the calculation, we have to produce carpentry, from a processing point of view, we have to carry out a whole series of checks related to the concept of plan. Just to give an example, the classic checks of interplanar movements. So even when we assemble the structure directly from the 3D environment we must never lose sight of the concept of level. So in this case, having defined a framework structure of three floors, in the management of the levels, we must define the plans, for example, first floor, and a second floor. At this point, we go to the 3D editor view, with the functions mentioned above, for example, we take the column object. From the properties panel we activate the recognition check from magnetic grid. And by making a selection rectangle we are going to insert all the column. Also, we select the object steel beam. From the properties panel we activate the recognition check from magnetic grid. And by making a selection rectangle we are going to insert, in one stroke, all the beams. But we can, with the same philosophy, also define the foundation structures, for example. Select the plinth object. Verify or modify the properties, concrete, dimensions, etc. We activate the column recognition check. And by making a selection rectangle we insert all the column. Also, we take the object reinforced concrete beam. From the properties panel we activate the recognition check from magnetic grid. And by making a selection rectangle we insert all the beams. So the use of magnetic grid actually allows us to define structures of this kind extremely quickly. From the level management, we then proceed to insert what will be the loads. We insert the object steel floor simply defining the spanning line. These also for the first floor and for the second floor. So here is our model including also the floors.